please put your hands together for Richard Dean Anderson. So awesome to have you. Just flick the switch on the microphone and you're live. In the up direction. I don't take direction very well. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I apologize to anyone who's been in any line that I've been late for <laughs> through my entire life. Um, uh, things just get a little jammed up. Thanks for your patience. And good night. <laughs> now, it is awesome to have you here. Have you been in Pittsburgh before? I have. I was here to help celebrate something for Michael Keaton. He's Pittsburghian, right? Thank you. And uh, another, I was in town to skate, uh, to play some hockey against some former penguins. Uh, I used to, I was co-creator of the, someone help, um, the Celebrity All-Star Hockey Team. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. We lost. <laughs> I'm so proud. But you showed up, and that's that's a win, right? I, I yes. We'll, we'll I, go with that, right? I did went to a game, a Penn's game the other night. They won. They needed the points. <laughs> well, right before we we have a bunch of people waiting, we got two questions, and I'm going to move over there for them. But I do have a question. Um, on Stargate, I love I love you, and of course MacGyver and keep Stargate. Moving. Keep, keep moving. moving. I keep, yeah. I'll keep going. <laughs> um, you dealt with a lot of CGI, a lot of effects that were put in later in post. Were there a time? Was there a time that you saw something or reacted to something that you were told about, and later on you're like, maybe I didn't react enough, or maybe I reacted too much to that? No, nope, I think it was all perfect. Just All right, fair enough. Spot on. <laughs> I nailed it. Yeah, there are always glitches that happen along the way in my behavior. And they sometimes had, early on, they had to cut around my personality. <laughs> and, um, and then we started using a uh, tactic of asking me to say the words the way they're written. And... <laughs> Which I never did, but no, I did. It was um, it was pretty smooth sailing. I got to admit, they had to. They, I mean, they had to keep an eye on what I said sometimes, because it was never the same twice. <laughs> well, it was always fun. All right, we have a, our first question over here. Um, you had answered um, three of four questions at the autograph table, but I was wondering if. Um, you knew that Leo Conkey was going to be playing in Sellersville, Pennsylvania on Sunday night. Wait, just say that again. Leo Conkey. Are you? He's playing. I almost said the S word. He's, he's playing in Sellersville, Pennsylvania on Sunday. How far is that? It's Sunday? This Sunday. And tickets are still available. <laughs> well, by all means, anybody who knows who she's talking about, please try and go. Oh, yeah, please go see him. He's just phenomenal, and um, I'm kind of chummy with him, I'd like to say. But uh, we've communicated, and I've seen him at a couple of concerts. But, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I might stay, for God's sake. Oh, wait, we're working that day, aren't we? Yeah, I, I think you are. You may not it, see me on Sunday. I'm just. I, it, it's after the con, so maybe... Get calling a chopper. Gonna look into know. that. Yeah. <laughs> right now, get on that. Uh, get get on that file device. Leo Kotke. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you for that. <laughs> Love it. All right, and our next contestant. I just got Good. giddy. So, so, Richard, a question I have is about MacGyver. You had a co-star on there by the name of Dana Elkar, who used to also play on Dark Shadows many years before MacGyver. Just was curious, what was your working experience like with him? And also, why you were working with him? By chance, did he ever mention anything about Dark Shadows or what it was like to work on that show? You know, it, we bonded a little bit uh, in that, well, I'll be frank. I, I, before I did General Hospital, I didn't know what a soap opera was. And so when he started talking about um, Dark Shadows, 
um, I sort of had to acclimate, reacclimate myself to uh, that world. I'd never seen him on the show, but um, we shared that common experience of having me to learn a ton of dialogue in one day. So I learned to read better. And we're glad. He, uh, that. And just to further that, uh, he, he was one of the kindest, most generous. Uh, acting partners that I've ever had, and a gentleman. He was just a wonderful guy. Awesome. And our next... Yes, by all means. And our next question. Hi, uh, this is related to SG-1. Um, two questions, real quick. In Window of Opportunity, did, how much control did you have over the things that were going on in the time loops, like the golfing and the kissing Carter, the pottery? Like, was that all scripted or did you have control of it? And then also, was it always intended that Jack and Sam would get together or was that decided later on? What? <laughs> um, I, I don't think it was ever intended for the two of us to get together. We happen to have a real life camaraderie kind of friendship. Um, um, but, uh, no, it, I think it just evolved out of over the seven or eight years, however long I was there, they, that, um, cause she was into other guys by the end of that show, right? Didn't she marry some stunt man or something? <laughs> I, didn't she? But she, she was fooling around, right? She dated Pete. Pete? Yeah, Pete. You mean <laughs> on MacGyver Pete? Watch me mess this up. Um, uh, well, repeat part of that while I'm answering the other part. No, it was never intended. Uh, the, I think it evolved out of our, our relationship um, off camera, which was very fun and glib and funny isk ash isk ask I'll get there stick with me um, and there was an earlier part to your question yeah. in window of opportunity how much did you have to do with the, oh. the golfing and did you have any input on that a lot of the 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 general setups were scripted like um, MacGyver I almost said Jack uh, sends a ball through the gate and, um, you know, cut to some other planet and you see the ball come through. That was fun. St I think that was improvised. But um, uh, for the most part, uh, I don't know what to say about it anymore. But um, Amanda and I had to rehearse a lot. Um, anybody buying that? <laughs> Now, that, I think most of it was scripted, but some thoughts might come to us while we're shooting one thing and add to it or, you know, can always edit around. Did you get to improv during that episode? Like, during my backswing, there was any of that improv? Um, I don't, I honestly don't remember. Um, yeah, I wish I could say definitively, but... I think it was. I think it was written. Well, they did a good job. They, what? they wrote you as you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. What? Yeah, the Fruit Loops. Y yeah, a, a lot. Of, oh, right, a lot of that was just waiting on set, and we'd start playing with the props and one of them was juggling them you okay <laughs> all right welcome back <laughs> all right and our next contestant on the questions yes given your personal uh popularity as well as the large rabid energetic fan base for macgyver have you ever considered a spin-off I would guess this group would love to see something like that. That's 73 years old. He's, uh, 
Um, I, I think they tried that. Um, uh, there, there was a second MacGyver, right? Um, which I, I have to be honest, um, I was not a fan of. I wasn't um, too supportive of them. I never badmouth it. Can't do that. Everybody's got to make a dollar, etc. Um, but I, I didn't. I didn't think that um, the new one was um, re reflective of what we intended MacGyver to be. And uh, it more, I've described it as being a cop show with a title, you know, our title. And um, it, I, it missed the boat, I think. There was far too many guns flying and I don't know. I just didn't prefer it at all. Not enough uh, chewing gum and paper clips, right? <laughs> well, maybe a little too much of something. <laughs> Hey, Richard, um, you know, my father and my brother share the same Richard Anderson as you. So we always, you know, say, oh, you know, you copy off Richard Dean Anderson. So, um, sis. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had the pleasure of meeting Henry Winkler a few years ago. And, you know, and, and he was very, very enthusiastic uh, about M MacGyver. Um, but how does your, how do you think... MacGyver, I mean, he's just pretty much in a dictionary. Everything you do, like, um, if, like if you're stuck in a corner, everybody will, will say, well, what, what will MacGyver do? You know, how, how do you feel that that's part of history? And then the other part is uh, whenever SG um, came out, you know, I mean, that was just uh, blew up. I mean, that was just, you know, whenever they heard that you were going to be starring in it, yeah. So, so how how do you went, made the leap from MacGyver to to Stargate? Well, that wasn't too hard. I mean, both characters were fairly reflective of me, uh, with some alterations back and forth. But I've never fancied myself a, a real great actor. I mean, that's a confession of mine. Um, so I had to rely on whatever was here innately, or is that the word, innately? Yes. My natural self. So I just made adjustments in dialogue and in certain behavioral things along the way. But I, I don't think my character swing was that huge that I had to dig too deep, too deeply, too deeply, too deep? Anyone? My father, if my father was here, he'd be yelling at me. You know damn well what it's supposed to be. I don't, Dad. I was going to just fake getting hit, but he never hit me. <laughs> Maybe he should have. All right. And we have another question here. Hey, Richard. How you doing, man? I'll be all right. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> so, uh... I decided to wait until I got in line to text my dad and ask him if he had any questions for you. What did he I, say? He did not respond. I sent him about 40 question marks, nothing. Uh, so then I thought of a really good question, which was, what did you think of the reboot? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you answered that. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to say, I'm 28 years old. I'll be 28 uh, April 5th. Thank you. Happy birthday, man. Yeah. No, just <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was born after the show, but uh, me and my younger brother were brought up on MacGyver. And uh, it's my younger brother and I. Just so you know. Richard Dean Anderson correcting my grammar. Hey, I got it my whole life. <laughs> Suffer. I correct people on that, too. So I don't know why I just did that. Uh, yeah, I ain't got no <laughs> Um I guess what I... Uh, oh, I wanted to mention the Ants episode of MacGyver. Yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> I don't remember the name. I just remember Ants and... Uh, Trumbo's World. Oh, Trumbo's World. I remembered that. Okay, yeah, yeah. That does ring a bell. Do you know how old I am? <laughs> how old were you when you did Trumbo's World? Twelve... <laughs> 13 I don't 
Uh, do you remember anything about that episode? Was I don't it? remember this morning. So okay. <laughs> get used to that. All right. <laughs> but well, yeah, that that gave us nightmares. I just wanted to. It, it got to the point while I was doing, you know, series after series that. I don't know what the total would be in the end, but there's no way I can remember all of... I mean, if I'm given clues about an episode way back when, um, I can usually figure out what I was doing and um, that. But otherwise, I'm, I'm starting to blank out. I'm an old guy. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> no. Um, it's okay for you. <laughs> a couple more things. One... Uh, you you give me real Harrison Ford vibes. I do. Yeah, man. I'm just really feeling it. I Her should have his money. Harrison Ford. You're, yeah. You guys should do a show together or something. Okay. And then, uh, my last question is, uh, can you fix my fridge? No. <laughs> just thought I'd ask. Thanks, Richard. <laughs> Anything you want to know? Let me know. Open and shut. All right, and our next question. Uh, that was really weird. Um, since you don't remember, I met you this morning. You know, gave me an autograph or two. Um, I'm the You're one the one. The, yeah, I got the paw prints. <laughs> I, love uh, I got two questions, but unfortunately, it's uh, about your past, so I don't know if you'll remember or not. However, let's try this. <laughs> uh, how did you feel uh, when uh, Man is Happening did that um, Mick Useless uh, comment to you on the blooper reel? Uh, when you were doing solitudes, when you were in the ice, give me more. Um, uh, when she was calling you, when she said, uh, when she was trying to uh, dig out the DHD and she was tapping away, and, and you were like injured, and she was saying, you know, you're you used to be MacGyver, like you have we have everything here, like why can't you do this? You used to be MacGyver, you're make useless now. Or I can't remember the exact wording on it. You remember it quite well. Like, well, I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I I recently watched it. So, um, what was the question in there? Just your your what's, I mean your your. The look on your face was priceless. I, I just got to say. Oh, well. It was hilarious. The first time, I don't know if that's the version they ended up using in the final cut, but <laughs> um, they used, they printed the first take of that. So I didn't know it was coming. So whatever reaction you saw might have been either me trying to stay in the scene or me not staying in the scene. Yeah, you, you completely went out of that scene. You're so I, I broke the fourth wall. Nice. Yeah. And then the other uh, question is, um, I, have you ever done a stunt of your own that you instantly regretted? Mm, just one. And it wasn't, um, it wasn't really a stunt. I was just, it's uh, the, the episode that where I broke my, uh, not broke my back, but I, I split open my um, L54S1 um, vertebrae. And uh, one of the discs compressed. Basically, I was running towards camera in, in tall grass. They hadn't scouted the area uh, or combed it because um, they wanted fresh grass for me to run through. And I put my foot in a hole and immediately went down to, and I had a time enough, a split second enough to shoulder roll and not, you know, break my arms or anything in front of me. But my back, um, I knew something was wrong. And, uh, you know, things a little sore, a little, you get some ice on it and all fine. And I went out that night to uh, play some pickup hockey. And uh, I tried, I got all suited up painfully and was just putting my leg over the, um, over the boards to jump on the ice. And I, uh, it, the, the image I, for simplicity's sake, I draw is that if you had a, a balloon, like a water balloon, but it was filled with molten lead, exploded in my lower back, and I could feel it just seeping, like literally creeping down my leg, and it was sciatica, yeah. And uh, it took him uh, two days to, you know, x-rays and all this, everything else to find that one of the discs had blown out, torn, tore, and lodged itself in my cord, right next to my uh, spinal cord. And that, caused, that wrought havoc for uh, almost every other injury I had since, um, and, and prior. But 
since for sure. I've just, I've had back problems and um, you'll see me horizontal. So, I mean, if we're just all hanging out together, you'll see me laying down a lot just, uh, just to get things aligned, you know, so I can forage on. Um, but yeah, that injury I wasn't real happy with. Everything else I really deserved. <laughs> Skiing and skating and stuff. All right, we'll clear the couch off for you. Next question. That's kind of heavy duty, man. Um, MacGyver fan here. I just got to tell you first, it's because of you I learned how to make rope out of duct tape. Or duct tape out of rope out of duct tape, right. Well, what from, is it? From watching your show. You know, and it saved me a couple of times. But, you, I, got a, but I got a question. Uh, did you ever watch Mythbusters where they tested a bunch of your, uh, you know, MacGyver yeah. myths, I guess so? What would you think of it? I thought it was fun. I'd met those guys in um, New Zealand, I think. And uh, they're really sweet guys. And um, we got to chat in a little bit. And they told me, they, they said, we've got an episode coming up. Uh, we'll be in touch. And they had to clear some piece of television or something, something silly. I said, by all means, please have at it. And um, they did what, it, what they did. Yeah, I thought it was, you know, pretty well done. Do you remember what the upshot of the, uh, whether it was viable or not viable? Because I had made an airplane out of... Yeah, they tried that, and it, yeah. you know, it just oh, went over the cliff. Nose and it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they said the cement mixer uh, motor wasn't strong enough. Among but it should have flew, but if it was a stronger engine, it might have worked. Should have flown. <laughs> Sorry. What am I going to do with you? And the next contestant on Grammar with Richard Dean Anderson. Okay, I, I'm not really good about speaking in a microphone, so I hope I don't pass out in the next few seconds. But we'll hold it out a little the bit. 38 years I've been waiting to be able to see you and, you know, be visually in the room with you. And I have an impact story where me and my father in 85 when My father started, and I. My father... Oh, I'm nervous. This is what happens. So my father and I, in 1985, started watching the show off the get-go. My father then shortly later was diagnosed with a severe mental illness and had, with me being a daddy's girl, um, would not speak with me or be in the room with me, and it was a very big struggle. But MacGyver actually brought us together one hour out of one day of the week where he would actually be in the room with me and we would enjoy the show even though it was quiet but I want you to know that your craft was actually more of a, a connection for me than entertainment and my question is have you ever heard any other impactful stories with people who have been uh, changed or maybe just yeah. better because well, of your shows? Well, I've heard some today, actually. Um, uh, maybe not necessarily as profound as yours as um, you've shared with us, but um, there are several people that have uh, thanked the character for um, for help uh, assisting them along the way at certain points in their lives, and um, two two of you out there um, uh, became scientists uh, or something scientific. Yeah, there's one of them, doctor, and um, uh, it it makes me really. I'm very thankful for that. For having been in a position to, you know, affect people in a positive way. Because I used to be a little snotty kid. It, well, used to be is a stretch, but, um, but it's nice to know that uh, there's something about the character that really kind of touched people in, in good, positive, progressive ways. Um, so thanks. Thanks to you. Thank you. 
Our next contestant. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Hi. Um, Hi, Mom. <laughs> well, my mom wanted to be here really bad, but she has a bad back like you do, so she cried this morning because <laughs> she could come meet you. So my question is, um, is there any funny Henry Winkler and or like uh, Bruce McGill stories from MacGyver Murdoch? When you guys were piling around behind the scenes, did you ever have any funny stories you could share with us? Absolutely none that I can share. <laughs> <laughs> mm. No, I mean, we didn't really pal around. Uh, we were just famously friendly and funny on the set. Um, but everyone made sure the cameras were not rolling. It, it got a little dicey there once in a while. Just because we we're loud and obnoxious, but um, no, we did, nobody really socialized after um, you know the final gun. It was just, so to speak. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean we're friendly, we adored each other, but um, and Michael, of course, was involved in so many other things. Um, Michael DeBar, Shanks, I don't know from. When I see him, I'll tell him one person <laughs> gave you an applause. But I, I really don't. I wish I, you know, I could make him up, but that wouldn't be fair to either of us. Thank you. And our next question. Good evening, Richard. How are you? I'm fine. So my name is Mike. And a couple of friends and I, we co-host a podcast called Making Fun of MacGyver. But we have some fun. Listen, room. We have some fun with the show because there was a lot of great elements to the show. And if I can, I'd like to ask two questions, first and foremost. We, we've spoken with creator Lee David Zlodoff. He's been on the show with us. And he explained what went into naming the MacGyver character and how the character was built. But how much of that did you bring to the table versus simply following the creative that you were given? Oh, he's so full of it. He's just full of it because um, I have to take credit for it. Um, I don't know. What did he tell you? I, I'm in the dark. He talked about the, the naming and how in the, in the 80s it was, you know, the, the, the Mick this, the Mick that, everything with McDonald's and, and MacGyver. He can do it all. So we're going to call this guy MacGyver. And with the, the Scottish heritage is what he said along the lines of, of coming up with the Mick name. I forget, forgive me, I forget what he said the character was going to be called, but he said, no, we're not going to do that. Um, that part is maybe true. But something it, guy? It was going to be called. But MacGyver's first name, I came up with. And if Zlotoff was trying to take credit for that, screw him, I say, screw him. Well, we, we love the Angus branding. And then the other question, the fun that we have, there's certainly some cheesy moments on the show. A lot of inspiration comes from MacGyver, and we've heard it from our fans too. But uh, do you recall any episodes or moments that you found particularly silly or far-fetched? No. <laughs> Thank you. On, on, are you talking about MacGyver? Yes, sir. Well, yeah, there probably hundreds or dozens of them at least, but I can't, you know, they're not coming to mind. Not one that smacks you in the face right now. No, you're going to have to give me a, like a, a fact sheet or something to refer to. I, while you're asking I'll, I'll your do my research between now and tomorrow. Oh, I was just going to say, if you, you know, while you're asking your next question, I won't listen. I'll try and think of one. <laughs> no, it's all right. I appreciate the time, and thank you very much for being here. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Did you practice to get that voice? No, sir, it's, it's factory. Sorry. No, it's, it's very AM, AM DJ. I have that face for radio and a podcast, so thank you. As opposed to FM radio. Definitely AM. Next question. Uh, I've got kind of a, a silly question from all of these, Good. these serious things. Uh, I'm asking on behalf of my wife, what is the silliest Stargate memorabilia you ever had to sign? You mean stuff from the show? So, something about the show. Because she, may, she, she, she spent a, a day at a medieval reenactment event making flak jackets for stuffed animals. Really? 
really. A person across the, 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 the street from us at the event was coming to a convention in Maryland that, that you were, or, 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 and eventually attended one where, where you were. She had, uh, she did a fan fiction where the four, the four main characters of Stargate were turned into animals. And uh, go your, on. Your yours was turned into a panda. Pandas are good. Uh, I remember Tilk was a penguin. Who was Tilk? Tilk was a penguin. Okay. And uh, one of them was a cat of some sort. But basically, uh, that person <laughs> proceeded to go to various cons and had all four of you sign the flak vests that she made uniforms for the for the stuffed animals. I just didn't remember if you remembered that that. God, I wish I did. It that was such a strange, adorable. <laughs> but as a living, <laughs> flak jackets for stuffed animals. Yes, it's well, genius. Well, it's just genius. Well, the thing is, is that is that 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 that, that year we could not get the event we were at and what we were asked to make to line up. Because at that event we did, it was an SCA event, which is a slightly creative anachronism. We got asked to do flag jackets for plushies and a stuffed leg of lamb for a blacksmith so we could have a spit out. And uh, at a, uh, a different event that had nothing to do with the SCA, we got asked to do an SCA fencing doublet. So it was just the fact that I wanted to see if you were, would remember the of the flak jackets. Apparently you don't. God, I wish I did. I swear. There's so much I w wish I could remember, but um, that's not not sparking anything in there. Mind you, there's not much left, but... O'Neill, I am a penguin. Oh, we have um, a member of uh, <laughs> Stargate here. Hi, Richard. First of all, I want to say I'm a really big fan, and I'm kind of freaking out here, and this is a really big honor. And also, my mother is a grammar teacher. <laughs> I just want to Yay, let you know. teachers! Also, I have a question for you. Uh, what was your personal feelings about going from playing MacGyver, who was completely anti-gun, to playing Colonel O'Neill, who was always using guns? I've always been curious. How do you feel about that? Yeah, that's, um, that's a question I asked myself. Um, you know, I, to simplify it um, for myself, but uh, for the general populace, it's acting. You know, it was my job to make a transition and make it believable. Um, I don't know that I was, as Jack O'Neill, I don't think I was particularly gung-ho um, with the guy I used it when it was needed. But as a military guy, I guess it was justifiable morally but um but it you know it, it was easy um a transition to make i wasn't torn um because of the nature of the characters one you know had bad experiences with guns and took that on and then there's the military thank you so much ah oh, you bet Good question. A uh, quick follow-up to that. How much weapons training did you get when you started getting ready to do SG-1? Did they give you a lot of weapons training? Not before the show started. Once it started and we were, you know, being outfitted for all those things. Uh, yeah, pretty intensive stuff. I was, I was fairly in, insistent on it. Um, and it, took, it takes more time. Um, you know, the recent accident that happened in Phoenix or New Mexico. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's so unnecessary if things are done properly. Something screwed up. Thank you for coming. It's such a, an honor. And I want to know if you had a favorite SG uniform, because you've had lots of different colors of BDUs, your Air Force dress uniforms, etc. Do you have a favorite one, and do you have a favorite uh, weapon, like the Zats, the staff weapons, P90, etc.? I didn't like any of the alien stuff. I just, the Zat gun was lame, and with all due respect to the 
youth of America. Um, the Zat gun looked like two penises put together. <laughs> I mean, it was a little on the nose, actually, if you ever saw one up close. And it was so small. Um, uh, but there was a, uh, not an AR. I, I forget the, it was an Italian made in close, um, I'll call it a vehicle, uh, rifle, gun, uh, weapon, thank you, um, that they had manufactured all in plastic for us. Um, so there was no chance of anything flying out of the, the barrel. Couldn't fire. So they put just secrets. They would put it like CGI fire coming out um, on the rare occasion that we would need something to really read immediately. Um, we would use a real version um, of it, but never, never around uh, the crew or cast. And your favorite uniform? I don't know. Uh, uh, I stole the boots from from the the I almost said the blonde ones, the beige ones. The desert. Desert. Thank you. I knew that. Um, yeah, I stole a couple of pairs of boots from them, and the one, the black ones. Um, and there was a blue uniform? Yes. The uh, blue BDUs. It, it, yeah, it didn't. BDU. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I knew. Um, I, I don't know. I, I still have a couple pairs of black boots, so uh, I think the greens were my most comfortable because I'd wear them the most and they get soft, just like pajamas. <laughs> Thank you so much. God yeah. bless you. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> All right. We have two more questions, and I think that's going to be uh, it. So make them good ones. No pressure. Pressure. Use pressure. good grammar. Yeah, I'll try to. So uh, hi, I'm Sabrina. I came all the way from Argentina. Um, yeah, met her before, I know. and I. I know. I said, "Why? I mean, come on." <laughs> it's like a lifetime, uh, uh, you know, uh, a dream come true. Thank you for um, coming. Anyway, thank you. Um, so uh, I'm freaking out. Uh, I'm sorry. I so I'm sorry if I make any grammar mistakes. Um, You've got an excuse. <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you. So um, the rest of you. <laughs> I just wonder if you have uh, if you have to name one or two or three um, favorite memories from uh, the MacGyver show. Even from the character, you know, uh, whether it's, uh, I don't know, um, from the show itself or for being a part of it or, as I said, like the character itself, what would that be? And the second question is, have you ever watched the show? <laughs> like the whole Which show. Which one? MacGyver. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, maybe not all of them, to be honest, I, but I think so. Um, but, uh, the first part of your question was, do I remember your, your the favorite things to do? Favorite things about MacGyver. Um, the one thing that, uh, that I didn't insist on because I became a more practical man as I grew up in the business was that, um, I did my own stunts, as many as I could get away with. And some of them were kind of hairy uh, for the producers to allow me to allow me to do. Um, and but in general, I think that element of being a actor was uh, was fun because um, I there were episodes of skiing. I did all my own skiing stunts and what what have you. Uh, racing the car with. G. Gordon Liddy. <laughs> yeah, say that. Um, and it's stuff like that. Uh, a lot of motorcycle 
uh, riding through like off-road stuff that um, I did more during lunchtime than on camera. But that kind of stuff was always kind of fun. Thank you very much, and um, keep it going. We love this stuff. Gracias. <laughs> All right, next. Uh, Mr. Anderson, what are some of your favorite episodes of MacGyver? Any ones I got to do stunts in, it was always... No, I... Uh, uh, of MacGyver? You know how long ago that was for me, right? Many moon paths, not do MacGyver. Um, uh, can't, I, um, nothing in specific, it, like in um, that other show I did, it was Stargate? Yes, it was Stargate. Um, I did... Uh, a, a, there was an episode where I had to age to be a hundred years old or so, and um, that was fun to do. It was arduous makeup stuff, but I thought they did a fairly good job in the the latter stages of um, age. Um, and I have a picture of it. Uh, my daughter has a picture of it on, in her on her wall that depicts me at the the oldest I ever was uh, in that show. And I'm trying to catch up to it. I'm trying to see how close I'm going to get. Um, so that was fun to do in a techno. That's my teeth. Um, um, that was fun to do on a techno technological um, level. Um, but sitting around getting makeup on isn't usually a joyful um, occurrence. Uh, but I understood what I was going to. Once I got all old and aged and stuff, it was really fun um, to utilize it, especially at lunch, because I'd be pinching butts and, you know, <laughs> justifying my behavior because I was an old man. I'm waiting to get that old again. So. Thank you. You're very well. All right. This is the last question because he has a gun. It's rubber. Um, just one quick question for nice my wife. Know. She would like to know, do you prefer Fruit Loops or oatmeal? <laughs> oh, what a question. You put me on the spot, sir. <laughs> Who doesn't like Fruit Loops in this room? Is there anybody? You don't like them? Love Fruit Loops. There's you... a few heathens here. Okay. Oh, who likes oatmeal over Fruit Loops? Oh, you granola sucking people. <laughs> um, I don't have Fruit Loops uh, in my home, but I have a version of Fruit Loops that I wish I could remember the brand name, but it has no, sh not no sugar like one gram of sugar in it and no fat to speak of, um, but lots of flavor. And it's not as sugary, you know, obnoxious sweet like real Fruit Loops, I've heard. Is it Magic Spoon? What is it? Yes. <laughs> Who got he that? He told me. He, he, he had it. So. Oh, an aficionado in the loop cereal category. <laughs> Much. You're welcome. All right, here's a real quick class one just because I like her uniform. Not a question, just a comment. Um, I saw you in the photo booth earlier. Uh, my name is Marty. My, my late husband, Jim, was a big fan of MacGyver and Stargate, both. And uh, we're both volunteer firefighters. I've been a volunteer firefighter for 24 years, and my husband was up until he passed 11 years ago, a volunteer firefighter. And everybody in the department always called him MacGyver because he would have every conceivable tool in his bunker gear in one pocket or another. He'd have, you know, the, the Swiss Army knife. He'd have some kind of special screwdriver, and all kind of uh, gadgets. And so everybody in the department called him MacGyver. 
So I just thought you might get a kick out of that. I like that story. And thank you for coming. God bless. Thank you. And I love her Stargate earrings. That's like so cool. Uh, keep it going for Richard Dean Anderson. Thank you so much for spending the time with us. This is awesome. I didn't get to look on this side very much. My neck is killing me. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Seriously. <laughs> Hi, this is Michael Shanks, and you're watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. The fate of the universe may depend on it. Oh, and have fun, and follow your fandom. <laughs>